YouTube, what is good? Today we are talking about some editing techniques that you can use to take your black and white photography to the next level. So the example photo in today's video is one that I shot in the last behind the scenes video. And when I was making that video, I said that I didn't exactly like that photo and I still think it could be better. But when I was editing that image, I used a lot of techniques that can really enhance your black and white photo and I wanted to share them with you. Now it's important to note that during today's video, we're going to be editing this photo, but typically when I'm using these techniques, I'm refining the edit a lot more. Today's just kind of like a rough draft. I'm just showing you how I do things. And then if I was editing this, for myself or for my Instagram or to print, I would definitely go in and do a lot more work. It can be a little bit tedious, so just keep that in mind as you're watching the video and as you're taking these techniques and applying them to your own photography. This video might only be, you know, around 10 minutes long, but it could take an hour to get these techniques perfect, making your photo look as amazing as it could look. Before we get going, I wanna mention this article on Petapixel. I linked it in the description of this video. It is so cool because it shows the before the test prints of these iconic film photos and then you get to see the final photo and you see how photographers made notes on the image so they could dodge and burn the photo and essentially edit the image in the dark room. And it's really cool to see what they did to really enhance these photos and I think it would inspire a lot of you. So you can take the techniques from this video, you can see how the masters did it in that article and put it all together and really make some amazing black and white images. So. Check out that link after the video is done. If you enjoyed, hit that thumbs up, subscribe for more. Let's get into the edit. First up, basic adjustments. This is our starting point right here. The first and most important thing that we have to do to this photo is we have to make it black and white. So if you are using Lightroom, you can go ahead and just scroll down here to your color tab and go ahead and click B and W and now your photo will shift to black and white. Now the next thing we gotta do with this image is we have to crop this photo. Now if you watched the behind the scenes in the last video, you know that I actually wasn't happy with this photo because I felt like our subject being this person crossing the street was a little bit too far away. But after some thought, I said, you know what? It's actually not that bad. We can crop in pretty far on this photo. So I'm gonna switch my crop to 1.1 factor and now we are going to zoom in substantially. Now, this photo was shot on a Nikon D810, so I'm lucky enough to have pretty good resolution with this file so I can do a crop like this without losing a lot of detail and really affecting the image. So as far as the crop goes, I think that right there looks good. Now we're gonna do some basic adjustments real quick. We're not gonna do anything crazy with this. The first thing I wanna do is add some contrast into this image. It's gonna bring my contrast up quite a bit. Now you'll notice this image is kind of bright and if we're going for you know more of a moody black and white image, that needs to change. So I'm gonna bring my exposure down quite a bit on this photo to add some more drama into the image. And you can see right away, it's much more dramatic already off the top. So now I'm gonna bring my shadows up just a little bit to compensate for that change to our exposure. I'm gonna bring my highlights down a little bit and I'm gonna bring my whites down just slightly and my blacks down just slightly as well. And I think that is good for basic adjustments. Like I said, nothing too crazy with this one. So we got the basic adjustments out of the way. Step number two is the color sliders. Now I know you're thinking, wait, Color sliders, color adjustments, this is a black and white photo. Yes, that is true, but in Lightroom, making changes to the color sliders can actually affect the luminance of a particular color, even though the photo is black and white. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The one we will be changing is the yellow slider right here. So notice if I bring the yellows all the way down, how these yellow pieces of the image, if it were color, they darken up. And if I bring it all the way to the right, notice how they brighten up. That is what I wanna change. I wanna make these street lines pop out a little bit more to create some lead lines heading into our subject, which is that man crossing the street. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this to right about here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange. I'm gonna bring the orange up, not as high, but right about to zero. And those are the only ones that I'm gonna change. But it's important to remember that when you have a black and white photo, you can still manipulate how the colors look. So step number three is painting in light to enhance the photo. One thing I love about this image is we have this person crossing the street, which is a nice subject, but we also have a lot of light behind them and in front of them being the light reflecting off the street. So we can enhance that in Lightroom. Let's do it now. 
we're going to use the brush tool to isolate our subject. Now, what I'm gonna do is make sure our brush is a pretty decent size with a pretty decent feather, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure our show selected mask overlay is checked on. So I'm gonna drop our brush right here, I'm gonna click one point, and then I'm slowly going to brush out in a circular motion. Now we got our brush laid down, I'm gonna go ahead and click this to remove our overlay, and now I'm gonna adjust our exposure. I'm gonna bring our exposure up to brighten up the center of the image, and this adjustment will make a lot more sense as we go through the edit. So I'm gonna bring this to right about here. I think that looks pretty good, and what I might do now is I might grab this erase right here, I might bring the feather up, and once again select show selected mask overlay, kind of move this around, erase some points, and then make more adjustments accordingly, brush different pieces back in. And I think for now right here looks good. At the end of the edit, if we want, we can go back and we can make further adjustments to where exactly this brush is manipulating the photo. So we really brought up that light around our subject and now you can see our subject is really popping out right there in the center of the image. But there is more that we can do to isolate this subject. There's a few techniques that I like to use. They're pretty simple. Let me show you now. First thing we are gonna do is increase our vignetting. I think I finally said that right. You guys love to give me a hard time for saying that word wrong. I'm gonna bring this to right around negative 40 and I'm gonna add a little bit of feather to it. Obvious reason why we are increasing the vignetting on this photo is to bring our eye towards the center of the image. This is where the light is, this is where our subject is. So darkening up the corners brings your eyes right to the middle. Next up, we're going to introduce some graduated filters into this photo. Now, what a graduated filter is, essentially you're applying a brush, but you're applying it in a graduated way. So notice how I slide this out right here, I click it, pull it down, and now I can make changes to the photo in a graduated way to this side of the image. So check this out, we're gonna bring the exposure all the way down. Notice how at this end of the graduated filter, the exposure is very dark, and then it slowly fades into our photo. That is what we are going to be utilizing today. Sorry that wasn't the most elegant ex uh, explanation of what a graduated filter does, but basically, you're just applying a change in a graduated way on any piece of the photo based on where you drop and slide this filter. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring the exposure down on this side. We're gonna bring it to right about negative 20, I believe. I'm gonna bring my shadows down and I'm gonna bring my highlights down as well. Now what I'm gonna do to save time is I'm gonna add a graduated filter to the bottom of this photo and to the right side of the photo. Now I'm not gonna talk while I do it, I'm just gonna fast forward through so you can see what I'm doing without getting kind of a long-winded explanation. I'm essentially doing the exact same thing. I'm gonna drop two filters in here and I'm gonna bring the exposure down to help us isolate that subject even more. This last graduated filter is going to do the opposite effect of the other three. We are going to brighten up the top piece of this photo right here to kind of enhance that foggy, that overcast look that we're going for. I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna check and make sure I got this pulled down far enough by selecting the mask overlay once again. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring my white and my highlights up to brighten up this sky right here. Bring those highlights to right about there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring these whites up as well. I think that looks good. And now I'm gonna bring my clarity down quite a bit to enhance this foggy, kind of not clear look I guess you would get on a rainy day like this. So I'm gonna bring the clarity down to right about there. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and call that. And like I said earlier, we can always come back and adjust these filters later once we're done with the complete edit. So now we're on to the last step of this edit, going in and refining the photo, taking out anything that we might think is distracting, maybe making some changes to adjustments we made earlier in the edit now that we're all the way through. So let's wrap this thing up. One thing I might do is remove some of these distractions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the clone stamp tool and I'm gonna clone out a few different things on this image. This light post right here, do not like the way that light looks. I'm gonna go ahead and clone this one out as well. And I'm also going to clone out these marks in the bottom left corner. Notice this little reflection right here, that's unnecessary. 
and these lines right here are also unnecessary. For the sake of today's example, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm done, I'm cool with that. I would go in and I'd adjust these more accordingly, make sure they're perfectly done, but for the sake of today's example, we're just gonna pretend like that looks perfect to speed things up. And there we go, that is it for this edit. Like I said, remember, this was just like a rough draft for me. I'm just going through showing you guys how I would get to probably like 80%. At this point in the edit, I would go back in and I really start refining all these adjustments that I made to make sure that it looks natural and it looks as perfect as it can look. But with that being said, I hope you can take these techniques, apply them to your own photography and improve your edits, improve your black and white photos. If you enjoyed the video, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, drop a comment and make sure you subscribe for more photography videos. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you have not checked out the behind the scenes of how this photo was made, make sure you do that. It was the last video. But yeah, really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time.